This episode is brought to you by our friends at Brooks Blooms, your all-in-one landscaping solution. Brooks Blooms three-step landscaping experience offers a seamless journey from design to construction and ongoing care, ensuring your outdoor space thrives year-round. Visit brooksblooms.com today to embark on your landscaping journey where every step is a step towards a vibrant and beautiful outdoor entertaining space. G'day everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Ads and Dunks podcast. As always, brought to you by the Oz American Aces. It's Dunks here, one of your hosts and joining me on the line. As always, it's Adzi Trelaw. How you going, mate? I'm good, mate. I'm very good. Got my cup of tea, which is uh, your old cup that you don't even remember that you gave to me. So I've got my cup of tea, my NBA 2K. I was just playing this prior to getting on. We've had a win this week. The NBA finals is over. So now we can start talking about the NFL. It's been a good week, mate. How are you going? It's been a good week for the both of us. Two wins on the board, which was nice. Uh, And as you said, yes, the NBA finals is all done and dusted. So... Let's just get our thoughts, takeaways from that, because it was a pretty uh, one-sided affair. Yes, it was. I mean, my feeling is I, if Brado can do me the biggest favor and go back and listen to the podcasts that we've done previously, going all the way back to the start when we spoke about the NBA, oh. I am adamant I said Boston Celtics will win. My two teams were Boston and Denver, and I said Boston, so um, I'm going to stand by that. But in all seriousness, in all seriousness, Joshy, I think um, it was a not, not, not a surprise for me at all. I think the way they rostered their team, the way they designed their team with Paul Zingas and Drew Holiday um, yeah. and obviously have their two stars in Tatum and Brown, I mean, it just didn't surprise me. And far out. Like, that is a stacked team. And it's been a... It's been a pretty lackluster playoff series, which has been frustrating for all of us because we love watching our American sport. But yeah, it was no real surprise for me. One thing I was happy with was Jalen Brown winning the finals MVP because I feel like for someone who is such a superstar player on both sides of the ball, he does not get recognition at all. Never made an All-NBA team. I don't know if he made the All-Star team this year. I might have been wrong. He might have. Brado will know. But it just never gets wins anything. And I love the fact that he won the finals MVP and they, just, they didn't give it to just the best player in being Jason Tatum. So um, they're my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Well, do you think do you think Tatum was robbed of the finals MVP yeah. or, or not? Definitely no, not. No, I don't. I don't. I think... I think um, uh, Jalen Brown was one. If there was a, if there was a rankings, I'd go Brown one, Drew Holiday two, then I would go yep. Jason Tatum, and then I'd go probably Luca because you know other than today he's been pretty good. So that'd be my my thoughts. What about you, you? Yeah, I'm I'm in agreement. Um, do you also think that Tatum was flat when the announcement got made mm, today? Nah, I don't. I mean, nah. Oh, you know what? I think there's a little bit of him that's flat because. Mate, let's be real. The the American way, which is great because they show their passion and their pride in their individual performance. They want MVPs and all this stuff. And and um, this isn't a dig at all, but I think he would have been the slightest bit flat because in the debates, right, when we talk about yeah, MJ, yeah, this yeah. is my theory, right? When we talk about MJ and LeBron, and I'd love to know what a lot of people think and what you think. Like everyone talks MJ LeBron, MJ LeBron, and they can go into all these stats. But I, one of my arguments for MJ is every time he was in a final series, he won first and foremost, but he was always the best player on the court. And that is proven by six finals MVPs. Every time LeBron's been in a final series, he hasn't been the best player. And I don't care what LeBron fans say. You go back to 2010 series when they lost to the Dallas Mavericks. If Miami Heat were to win that series... Dwayne Wade would have won the finals MVP. It would not have been LeBron James. And I know a lot of the LeBron fans might not be liking that because I love LeBron as much as anybody, but they're kind of my (laughs) arguments. So to Jason Tatum, for the rest of his career, if he doesn't win a chip, it's always going to be, yeah, he won a chip, but he didn't win the finals MVP. So, And that's a little bit of a knock on Steph Curry because Andre Iguodala won his final MVP. Um, So, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts, mate. What about you? No. I'll just agree with you because I know that you're the NBA fanatic. You're the American sport fanatic. Mm. But, um, yeah, I, I did think that he might have been a little bit flat when he when the announcement got made. But all in all, it was a, yeah, very well-deserved um, chip, as you call it, um, by the Boston Celtics. So, 
Very impressive. What about Kyrie going up to him post game or before he got the, just subbed out before the end of the game? Do you think he's feeling it a little bit? Yeah. Oh, mate, you would, wouldn't you? I mean, he mm. ugh, won a championship, obviously went there to want to win a chip and then, you know, obviously had a bad falling out and Boston clearly don't like him and they boo him and they, they would be up there as the most passionate fans in any sport. So, um, you know, I could imagine he'd be feeling, but I think – Good on him. I mean, his humility, he would have been obviously really humbled by not winning yeah. and he didn't have the greatest series. He didn't play overly well. But the fact that he still congratulated Boston and whatnot and, you know, it would have been hard for him to do. I mean, it's it's, it's reflective of his, of his character and, and good on him. I mean, he's a superstar, mate. He's genuine superstar of the competition. So, um, yeah, that's it for the NBA. Another year of the NBA that's done. Good. Boston Celtics officially champions. 18... I think there was an 18th championship, which now takes him to outright yep. leadership, which is unreal. Yeah, which is huge. And, yeah, as you said, well done to the Celtics. Um, moving on, we'll get stuck into the weeks. How was your week? Did you get mu- get up to much? Um, yeah, the week was good, mate. I um, We played – what day do we play? We played Saturday Avo. Love the Saturday Avo time slots. So that's because we get the weekend um, night time and, and whatnot and, and can relax and not have to worry about not sleeping after a game. Because you know, as an athlete, we don't we do not sleep after mm. night games. So, yeah, what do I do? I didn't do much. I um, um, obviously Kim came down, so Kim and the girls played here on Sunday. Kim didn't play, obviously, but um, we got to hang out with Kim. We went to a function after our game, which was nice because we had a really nice win. And as as you know, and the footy world knows, it's a bye week for us this week. So. Um, we were able to let our hair down a little bit. Boys had a couple of drinks and whatnot, and um, yeah, it was was just a really good night. And, and to top it all off for me, Kimmy's been down and be able to spend the night with her, and um, yeah, just kind of be somewhat normal was good. Was good. How was your week? That's good. Good to hear. Uh, yeah, very similar. We played Friday night, so it was a bit of a shorter week after we did a potty last week, but got to go to the races. The uh, mm-hmm. the Strad broke on on Saturday, which was good fun. Um, yeah, it was nice to get down there and took a couple of the boys, Payne and uh, Jado was with me and, and Gus as well and a couple others. So uh, we met up with the Dolphins boy. There was just everyone was there. Like it was a good day. I've never seen uh, Eagle Farm like fully packed. And mm-hmm. this is literally like – this is like their Melbourne Cup. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's our – sorry, I shouldn't say there because I'm now in Queensland. It's our Melbourne Cup here. Um so it's the biggest day on the racing calendar. So it was pretty cool to be involved in that and see what it what it's like, I guess. So the whole day was great fun. Um, had a ripping time. Went to Hellenica for dinner after that. And oh, yeah, what a joint. Enjoyed, enjoyed that. Love it, love it, love it. You know the pool, oh. one, the cabana there? Oh. The, you oh. know the little cabana? Of course I do, <laughs> mate. Had um, plenty of cocktails there with you. And Hellenica is actually my favourite. You know that. It's my favourite restaurant up there in uh, in Queensland. So I might have to make a trip there this week because I'm up there for the next four days well, as I was of tomorrow. Say, Cannot wait. I was going to say. Yep. So the next thing on my agenda is to probably catch up with you. It is. It is. We're going to catch up. Going to see Brooke. Going to head out for dinner with Brooke, which should be fun. Hopefully I can get my jumper there because I still don't have any merchandise, which I'm jealous because I get to see yeah. you rock it and I know everyone at Brooks Blooms is rocking it and um, as you know, mate, I do not suit hats because uh, I don't wear one. So I cannot wait for the jumpers. Um, but that's something I'm looking forward to this week as well. I get to see Georgie and um, I was just on the phone to Georgie before on on FaceTime and I was playing a bit of 2K as I was saying. My screen's obviously right there and I was playing and she goes, oh, what are you playing? I said, oh, I'm just playing basketball. She goes, oh, yeah, can I watch? So I've put my phone there and she's obviously watching me play. And I learned that she's learned a new word, which every time I speak to her, I swear she just learns new words and sentences. And um, what all she said was, oh, dad, that's awesome. And I said, awesome? Where'd you learn that word? What does that mean? She goes, awesome means awesome. So um, yeah, she makes me laugh, mate. I cannot wait to see her. I'm going to take her to the movies on Friday. We're going to go watch Inside Out 2. Um she loves the popcorn and the little self-serve lollies and chocolate um, cup you can get at the uh, cinemas out at Karina Heights. So if we've got any um, listeners that listen to us in Queensland, I'll be going to the Carindale Shopping Centre cinema probably on the Friday. <laughs> so if you want to pop in and see us, which I'm sure we wouldn't have many, uh, feel free to come up and say good day. But 
yeah, looking forward to to seeing the girls this week and seeing you and Kaiser and and, and all the fam up there, mate. You've just sold yourself into a uh, club appearance there, mate. I look forward to hearing how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, if it's going to get uh, the ads and dunks and um, the podcast out there even more, happy to do that, mate. Like it. Uh, moving on to footy. Let's touch on your game first. Um, yes. Massive, massive win against the Dockers. Obviously, there was a few uh, not tipping with you, but you boys really stood up this week. And I didn't get to watch any of the games because I was at the uh, as the races, as I mentioned, but mm. must have been a very impressive win for you. Yeah, it was. It really was, Joshy. It was um, a win. I kind of... Well, I wouldn't say, yeah. You well, know, no, it was. It was. It was a win we needed. It was a. It was the kind of win that we needed. I felt like mm. from the get go we were on, and um, yeah, I, I, I genuinely feel like it, it wouldn't have mattered who we were playing against when we're playing in that frame of mind. It's um, we're a hard side to beat, and and the reality is for us, and I say this all the time, is if our midfield isn't on top, where you know we tend to lose those games, and you guys clearly smacked us around the ball last week. And that clearly reflected the score at the end of the game. So that was something that we really wanted to go into, um, you know, with a lot of pride. And that was really winning in the midfield battle because, you know, they've got obviously Sarong, Brayshaw and and Hayden Young. Um, Fife goes through there as well. They've got a very good midfield and their Ruckman, obviously, both Ruckman complement each other well. So I really felt like we came with the energy and um, it was probably our best offensive game in terms of how we move the footy. I mean... Felt like we really cut Freo up um, off halfback. Guys like Bailey Dale, you know, probably had his best game of the year, who was unbelievable all game. Um, you know, I felt like our forwards uh, spread of the load pretty evenly and it wasn't just one guy dominating. I mean, Westy probably played one of his best games. He was 50th game. And he was able to kick four goals, which is a career high for him. And um, that was off the back of his pressure and just, you know, what he brings to us week in, week out. So, yeah, mate, just extremely happy we were able to um, – you know, win the way we in the manner that we won, um, and feel like, you know, that's the more consistent expectation we have of each other. And hopefully, you know, now we've got to buy, we can attack that in the next, you know, our last nine games of the season, starting with North Melbourne after the buy. Yep. Nah, as I said, I didn't get to watch it, but I wish I did because uh, I guarantee you it would have been great viewing from the start. Um, was a surprise? Did you get surprised at all? Was there any tags or anything that happened on Bont or? Like no, nah, there wasn't. Were you, were you surprised with that? <laughs> um, oh, I thought maybe Youngy might have gone to him because I know he's a he, he plays a bit of those shutdown roles. Um, I was a little bit, but at the same time, I'm not sometimes because I don't think. Well, Jared obviously Jared Berry did a really good job on Bonte around the ball, but I think because he can have such an impact up forward um, mm. as Griffin walks there in the background. G'day, Griff. Um, I don't think teams – oh, yeah, it blows my mind sometimes. I don't know. I just don't think teams think that they can tag Bonty, so they mm-hmm. kind of just let him do his thing in a way. I mean, obviously, again, I'm saying Jared Berry did a terrific job at him around the ball, but he impacts the ball when he goes forward. So, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. And, and in saying that, though, man, like who do, you, who do you tag when you play the Bulldogs? Like Bailey Dale clearly is one of the best ball users in the AFL. You've got – um, Tom Libertoro, who's one of the best clearance players in the game, whether you want to stop him from winning first position. And then you've got, obviously, Ed Richards as well, who we, we've all seen what he's been able to add to his game. His speed and his breakaway is, you know, his second or third game he was playing as a midfielder, James Jordan went to him against Sydney. So I think mm. maybe that might have been the philosophy in a way. But, yeah, I, I expect, you know, now with the chat around the tag being around, which has been in the news freaking every single day the last couple of weeks, now that there's a lot more chatter about it, yeah, who knows? You, you, I, I wouldn't be surprised if North try and send someone to him because Ponty's form at the moment is, you know, unbelievable. He's a very unique one to match up mm. on, that's for sure. And you got to throw yourself in there to tag too, mate, because you're in unbelievable form as we'll go into a bit later on. But uh, anything else from your game that you wanted to bring up? Was there anything – because I'll bring something up actually. I want Because mm. you know how we talked about the holding the ball stuff a couple of weeks ago? Yep. Did you notice any differences yeah. in the way that that was adjudicated this week? I did, yep. And I don't want to say anything out of place here because, you know, never want to get in trouble. So I won't go into detail about incidents or who was involved. Um, yep. But, but yeah, there was times on the weekend when it should have been holding the ball. And, you know, there was players standing there like, yeah, you got to play the game out. But, like, from what we've been seeing, it's holding the ball. Like, the player gets possession, the ball come, gets tackled, ball comes out, there's no attempt. That's 
in my mind, holding the ball or dropping the ball, whatever it is. And, mate, it happened numerous times early on in our game and then, you know, and, yeah, obviously it wasn't a free kick. So this has probably been the issue for a lot of players and, and I know you're probably one who thinks the same, that, yeah, we're, I, we, I'm, I'm for it. I want it, the game to be where, you know, there's quicker decisions made. The player has to get rid of the ball. If he doesn't, it's holding the ball. But it just has to consistently get called. So that's my frustrating yeah. frustration that it doesn't consistently get called. So happened a little bit in our game. Um, but again, at the same time, as we've said, mate, the umpiring is probably – umpiring in an AFL game would be one of the hardest jobs going around at the moment. So um, I don't envy him. But, yeah, there was a little bit of inconsistency. Yeah, I agree. It was – it just, I think it's just the confusion. As you talked about, you don't, you see instances and you're like, you sort of stop as a player and you're like, oh yeah, that's going to be holding the ball. Oh, no, it's not actually. And then you got to keep playing. It's like, I feel like the frustration creeps in from that. So mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know if there's a way, because I don't, I have no idea how it works and whether or not the umpiring, um, uh, what do you call it, um, group talk to clubs during the week and say, oh, this is what we're focusing on this week or, you know, you know, because it came out about the holding the ball rule that week and it was like, right, we're going to start calling these a lot quicker and yep. this is what's going to happen. But then yep. this week there was sort of nothing and you don't actually know or you don't understand uh, what's going to be called. So you always mm-hmm. watch, like I always watch the first game of the week because I feel like you get an understanding of what the umpires are focusing on that week. Yep. Um, yep. So there's a bit of a theme. But yep. obviously we were, our, we were the first game this week, so you probably would have been able to see that on Friday night. Yeah, I think that led into the weekend a little bit. I felt like the games that I watched, there was a lot of inconsistency there. And I, yeah, yeah. I, I think, I do think the umpires are constantly talking with the coaches because the coaches probably get frustrated more than the players because they're watching and they're the ones who are dealing with the umpires and whatnot. It's just, it's just finding that consistency and, um, you know, the clarity in, what we're going to call, which I feel like we all have clarity. I, I genuinely do as players. I don't think anyone's going to game going, oh, I don't know what holding the ball is. I think we all know. Yeah. We just expect it to get called consistently enough. And I think the first week it was really good, but then on the weekend I felt like, yeah, just in my game, it just wasn't, yeah, it wasn't as consistent. And as 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 I keep saying and you keep saying, it is a hard job and a hard game to adjudicate so yeah hopefully going forward there's a little bit more consistency in it because yeah there were some balls that probably should have been called that weren't completely agree um your game give us your game i thought it was yeah friday night it was a an interesting one from my point of view i feel like we we played some really good footy but then there were patches where we let ourselves down and um the saints actually moved the ball quite well uh full field so those little lapses are something that we've definitely reviewed this week earlier on in the week and um yeah, a little bit of frustration here and there, but I feel like our best footy was really good on the night. Um, mm-hmm. It was weird because first quarter we got done at stoppage, but then we scored a lot from back half, which was something that we've sort of been trying to work on a little bit over the yeah. last, you know, six to eight weeks. And so that was really good. Like there was a positive, but then there was a negative in losing the stoppage. And then after that, after the first quarter, we evened up stoppage and then we probably didn't score as well and we couldn't defend as well at times. So yep. a lot of things, a lot of moving parts, but uh, all in all, you take the four points and you, and you run away with the win. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the overriding message is obviously take the four points, especially how even the competition is now and um, it clearly looked like that. I mean, it looked as a, you know, oh, you know, mate, I genuinely support you. When, you're, when I'm not playing, I'm sitting there probably as a Brisbane Lions fan watching you and, even I was getting frustrated watching because, you know, you guys would get a good lead and then the Saints would just wrestle back. And full credit to them, I mean, they were up against it and they clearly, um, you know, outworked us in reality probably in that last quarter to get back within six or seven points. How how was that addressed? How did you address the last quarter? Because obviously you don't want those trends in games in a team like your team, which is, you know, a year off being in the grand final. That must be firstly frustrating, but secondly, like an area where you could probably learn and improve from. Yeah, it's it you it's make you make a great point. It's something that on the night, um, when it's happening, I remember going off and they kicked a couple of goals and got them back to seven points and then, you know, Moz got a fifty meter penalty and kicked the goal. That's when I came back on the ground. So we just kicked another one to sort of go thirteen points up. Uh yeah. But yeah, all the conversations are around just trying to slow it down. And we've had conversations yep. this week 
because momentum is such a powerful thing in footy. Like you actually, it's it is really hard to stop. Like I don't know if there's an exact answer as to how to stop it, other than win the footy, find a mark, you know, chip it around, just slow it down. Mm-hmm. But we're trying to come up with ideas around, you know, what we do defensively. Whether you know, I'm not going to give away too many secrets, but. You, you've got to look at those little things and be like, righto, what can we do in this situation to fully stop their momentum? Because they are coming like with a full head of steam. So it was great that Moz was able to kick that goal and, um, you know, put us two goals up and then we managed to score another couple after that. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting talking point because it is, it is frustrating that we've given up, you know, a few of a few goals in a row um, when it's definitely not our, uh, our goal in terms of the game and where we are at. So I don't know, mate. It's um, yeah, something that we're, we're we are working on because our defense has been really good this year. I think mm-hmm. we're we're highly rated for our defense and inside fifty differential and whatnot. So we've got to be better in that area. And hopefully, uh, if we do that this week against Port, they'll chop us up. So we can't can't afford it. Yeah, no, I think you nailed that on the head. And I mean, it's a it's a good little insight into you know teams who are looking to want to get better. For those who like to listen and hear how you can you know keep improving, considering you guys are you know on the trend up and um, you're riding that bracket of teams that are around the 26. I think you guys are 26, just below us maybe. Yeah, maybe. Really vying for that spot. Um, what? Last question, what was your, you know, what's your thoughts on on the Saners? I mean, they've clearly had their challenges this year and there's a lot of, um, well, they've had a lot of pressure down here in in Melbourne um, considering they're a Melbourne side and um, they've got a, you know, I think they've got a strong list and a strong group and clearly they played finals footy last year and have played a good brand of footy. I feel like their last two weeks have been really good. Um, What is, yeah, what's your thoughts? I was interesting because, you know, we sort of came into the game thinking it was going to be all out defense like they did against the Suns. But this week they showed that they can play that attacking brand of footy. So I personally think that they will be so much better off for the game that they had against us on Friday Mm -hmm. night for the rest of the season because they found ways to get through us. You know, as I said, we're, we're not an easy defense to get through at times and they just picked us apart and made us look silly. So uh, I think it's going to give them a lot of momentum, even though they did lose. Um, they would have learned a lot about themselves and what they can do moving forward. And I agree with you. Their, their list, their group, it's very, it's sort of in that middle age bracket. I feel like they've yeah. got some really good young players. And um, I think it was Showmakers. Showmaker. Yeah, yep. he he looked really good as a as a debutante for the Saints. So yep. they've got a lot of promising young kids coming through, and obviously led by Jack Steele, who's a superstar. I love the way he plays, and um, have always admired him from afar. Uh, so yeah, he's a great leader for him, and I think he'll lead from the front and hopefully take him, you know, one step further as they go through the process. Definitely, and I agree with that. One more shout out for the Saints, and I know I've mentioned him before. He was one of my um, give love of the weeks. You know, early on this year, but Mar- Marcus Wind Windhager, I I genuinely think he's like a star. He he can play a shutdown role. Clearly, um, he done a terrific job on Lockie Neal the week before. Had done a ter- tremendous job on Took Miller, um, but I think what separates him from just being a lockdown tagger is he has real class and you know, has the ability to get in and out of traffic. And watching his game on the weekend, he was a real fire starter for for the Saners in that last quarter. I know the 50 that got given away at the end would probably frustrate him. But, yeah, I think he he's a real gun, mate. I think he's going to be a very good player for a long time. And, and if his trajectory is to be the premier lockdown, you know, tagger in the competition, then, mate, good luck when you come up against him because, yeah, he's very mm. disciplined and a very good player. Yeah. I, I agree with you. I think this year he started off out as a normal, like not a tag or anything, and he, he was dominating. He so, mm-hmm. yeah, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Anything else from your game before we talk anything, well, anything really footy-wise this round? Nah, other than I thought I nearly got reported for that dangerous so tackle at that point. No, thought, I'll tell you what. Uh, no, I'll tell you what. The com- the commentary was great. They, you, Mate, you like protected the – who did you tackle? Say, Who was it? Yeah, it was Windhager. Windhager. Mate, you protected him as you've like slung. You can watch how you've kind of like, I don't know, like you've just like pre- looked after him. And I looked after him big that. time. You, you did? Yeah. Did it, did it go through like your I, mind? Were, were you like, oh, no? Yeah. Mate, straight away I was like dangerous tackling and 
I thought to myself, shit, that's I could get a week for that. <laughs> and then and then I, I was thinking about it for a bit and I thought, I thought I looked after him. Like I could have tackled him harder. But then I went off after that. So they took it down the other end and scored a goal. But then I went off the ground and Fags ye- like yelled out to me when I came off. He was like, mate, that was a good tackle. Don't worry about it. So from there, I was like, okay, it's all good. Well, I feel like that is a perfect example of a player. Obviously, you gave away the free kick because of the, the motion, but a player being able to look after the guy who was getting tackled because you didn't ping his arm, you let go of his arm, you did everything to a tee other than obviously not get paid the free kick. So good on you, mate. You're always caring for other people. <laughs> well, I don't want to hurt anyone, mate. I just want to of tackle course. and do it in in the way that, you know, is respectable in the game. So anyway, we'll move on. We will. Um Anything footy-wise from the round that you – I mean, it would have been hard for you because you probably only watched the fro- – uh, what days. You would have only literally watched the Sunday, eh? So, yeah. Uh, anything catch yep. your eye? Well, I saw uh, a Marty kick nine, which was pretty cool, and uh, that was a that was a good game. I watched actually the mini, the, the little, you know, thing you can watch on KO, I think it is. And, uh, yeah, that was pretty cool to watch. Like the Crows were humming and then Sydney kicked – what did they kick in a row? Seven or eight in a row? Something like that. Maybe ten. Yep. Ten in a row. I, th- I think Amadi kicked four in the third from what I believe. I think um, Brado will know that at the end. But, yeah, mate, that was – that's just thrown him into the top – I think five for the norm uh, for the um, Coleman Medal, which is it's crazy, mate. It it is crazy because right now, right, it's round fourteen, and the the leading goal kicker is Charlie Kerno and Ben King on thirty eight goals, mate. Back when we were watching footy growing up, even before that, I reckon the Tony Lockett would have been on thirty eight goals after four rounds. Yeah. It's just yeah. blows my mind how much. Footy has changed and over time has just gotten different and the high scoring, obviously. But it blows my mind that the Coleman medal is on 38 goals after 14 rounds. What do you I, like? I, is, is that crazy? Yeah, it is crazy. I remember, I, can't, I think it might have been my old man. Dad was telling me a couple of weeks ago, he was saying how Plugger once kicked like 40 goals in four weeks or something ridiculous like that. It was like he was averaging like 10 a game over a four-week span at one point, and I'm just like, how? How does he do that? It, it, it's crazy because obviously back in those days, that was when the full forward sat in the goal square and it was genuine one-on-one yeah. as soon as you get it to him. So, But it does blow my mind a little bit. But, yeah, what as I was saying, Joel Amati's kicked nine and put himself into conversation. You know that as soon as someone has a field day like that, I mean, they're automatically going to be straight in the conversation because there's not many goals that are kicked from an individual on a yearly basis. Yeah, it's huge. I feel like it's going to be a – Tight finish. Couple things. I well, I'll start with the Saturday Arvo. So once I finished my game, um, yeah, we obviously had a function, but I came home and had a nice big dirty burger from Burger Bay here in Hampton. Which um, for those who live in the area, Burger Bay, they know it's unbelievable. Um, <laughs> but I tuned into the Richmond Hawthorne game because I wanted to see the tributes to um, Dustin Martin, and I know we spoke about him last week, but my God, I mean, just. I spent the week, post our potty, I spent the week, like as it got closer to the games, um, there were so many highlight tapes and highlight reels of Dusty and my gosh, man, like his highlight reels, like some of his goals that he's kicked, some of his plays, it's just remarkable, like blows my mind and and the love that he got and to hear him get interviewed by Jack Rewalt on, on the field and talk off and walk off and talk, like it was just beautiful. I mean, it pulled at the heartstrings. It was it was just um, unbelievable to see from someone who doesn't obviously, you know, never really speaks to the media, who's such a polarizing figure, who's going to be an AFL legend. I mean, he's going to retire as one of the greatest players of all time. For him to talk and and the respect that he got paid, I mean, look at the latter, man. Like Richmond are 17th and Hawthorne, are, obviously, they're going to probably finish top eight. But the MCG, I think the crowd was 92,000, which was the – eighth highest crowd in the history of the AFL or something like that to go out there and pay tributes to a champion. I mean, that was so good to see. Yeah, it was huge. And how fitting of him to kick the first goal of the game too. Oh. I did see that one. That was just just vintage Dusty, that one, for sure. The manner and the way that he kicked it, I mean, it was it was just vintage. And yeah, you, you just think some things are just meant to happen and that was always meant to happen. That was cool. And I, I was so glad I was able to watch that, um, that tribute, essentially. And the other thing yeah. I, I watched was... 
midway through the third quarter, Sunday Arvo, first game, I was still saying to people, you watch, Collingwood will still win this. Collingwood will win. Collingwood will win. I was at the footy watching under 16's um, Noble Park and I was with one of my mates and I kept saying, mate, Collingwood will win. They're still not out of it. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, mate, lo and behold, they got back and won the game. Did you watch that game? I did watch that game. I was uh, flicking between that and the netball and, yeah, I was watching – I couldn't believe it, mate. I thought the Ruse were – the Ruse looked very good, in all honesty, at and the start did. of the game, though. They they played some ripping footy and just couldn't quite hold on. And, you know, we talked about momentum before, whether there's ways to get through it. Well, against Collingwood, it's very, very hard to stop them coming back from such a a, uh, a long or, you know, big score. So, I feel like, yeah, they're just going to do it again. But when is their luck going to run out, mate? I really want to know this. They're just so lucky. They get all this stuff happen for them, and I'm like, Oh, come on. <laughs> See, there's a point in time when you – I reckon you don't say – you have to say that they've just – they train and they just have the will and the want. Not the want. The want's the wrong word because the want – everyone has the want. Like confidence. They have, yeah, confidence. the confidence and the will to get the job done and never count them out. Mm. And Obviously, Braden Maynard's 200th. There's a lot to play for. Um, yeah. Yeah, just incredible. And, you know, they had some oh, – Bobby Hill. I mean, is that the – is that the mark of the year? Is that better than Jamie Elliott's? Has to be, mate. That was a sick mark. I I unfortunately think so too. And Jamie Elliott, <laughs> like, he would be kicking himself because that is inc- one of the best marks I've ever seen. And Bobby Hill's just done that. And, like, mate, he got a ride and then got another ride when he took the mark. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It was sick. Oh, I think, I think, um, yeah, I think that's mark of the year. Did you see also coming out of the game, they spoke about, um, obviously, we're talking about the tag. Will Phillips was doing a terrific job on Nick Dacos. Um, yes. And then he got subbed out at the end of the game. And I think from what I read that he was just a bit fatigued and I think it was one of his first games back. So, they obviously wanted to get some fresh legs in. But I think that was played a big part. Nick Dacos had a, an enormous last quarter. Yeah. On a review, I feel like it played a big part. I think he mm. he was doing a good job. Dacos went forward and at times Phillips went with him. But... Yeah, he was doing a good job. And then I thought in the last quarter, as you said, Dacos got off the chain a little bit and set him up for a few goals. So I reckon, I reckon Clarko would be filthy about that one. It was the one that they let slip. But in again, as we said last week, it's positive signs for North. Like we we spoke about their mm. young guys and a guy that was, I've given him love before, but I'm going to do it again. George Wardlaw, he played, mate, unbelievable yeah. game. His ability yep. inside and outside, I feel like that must excite North Melbourne fans because he, yeah, he really took it up to the Collingwood mids and had a great, great first half. Obviously, um, was trended with the game a little bit in the second half, but had a terrific game. Yeah, I I was very impressed with him in the first quarter. I thought actually the Pies might tag him because he was mm. going that well. Him and him and uh, Davies Uniac were 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 dominating for the North for the Kangas. So yeah, he's it. He's got to be the rising star favorite for me. Me too, mate. And uh, we've got him. Next in two weeks, obviously. So we're really looking forward to that game. We'll probably put some time into George Wardlaw and LDU. Um, anything from the week of footy before we get into this week's? Uh, no, nothing else really that stood out, mate. Beautiful, good. You usually got talking points for me. Now we don't have any, so it's great. Actually, I wanted to ask you. Uh, we already question. we already talked about the holding the ball stuff. So yeah, uh, there's a question that is going to get asked. So Ruby from I think this might be a YouTube comment maybe i'm not entirely sure but this just got thrown into our chat ruby sent in a question favorite goal you have kicked in your whole career Uh, thank you Ruby. not your best goal not your best yep not your best has to be your favorite goal probably the one the other day against you blokes (laughs) (laughs) i I didn't like mine i didn't celebrate mine i cracked the shits because i thought i kicked it bad Oh yeah, that I'm just going to say that. Other other than that, there was I kicked a goal in the semi final against the Hawks in 2016. I kicked, I think I kicked two points that day. Brado might know, but kicked one goal in the semi final, which was a bit of a. It was in a moment where you know they were coming. We sort of needed a bit of a goal, and my first year, I loved that one. Was that over the back? Nah, that was the West Coast nah. game over the back one. Okay. I was thinking of one of those. Yeah, well, it's a good one. My favorite goal. Oh, I probably think oh, I would say the oh, it's a toss up between 
my first goal in the 221 grand final. I felt like that was – I'd never kicked the goal in the grand final. So um, to kick that, that was obviously exciting for me. But I also think of the 2018, 2018 Richmond preliminary final where um, I kicked one on my left and it was a, as a inverted, inverted left foot torpedo that somehow went through the goals and that was really what – Kickstarted our um, last quarter goal flurry. So, yeah, they're probably my two favourites. But, yeah, that's a favour for Tommy. We know Tommy loves our potty. So, Tommy, we uh, we got that question out there because uh, you wanted us to get that question, Tommy. So, thank you, Ruby, for the question. Um, where were we? We were talking about this week's footy. So, we'll preview. Oh, we'll do your game in the end. We'll do our tips. And from what I believe, Brado said to us just before that, we actually got the exact amount of tips this week, which – Doing my math, you're probably still ahead of me. So that's flattening. Um, <laughs> six teams on a bye. Last round of buys too, which is great for all the footy fans out there because buys suck. I mean, from a footy fan perspective, Western Bulldogs, Hawthorne, St. Kilda, Collingwood, Richmond, Adelaide are all on bye. So the games this week, Friday night, beauty this one, Carlton versus Geelong at the uh, MCG. Who do you have? Ooh, uh, I'm going to say the Blues. At the G. There's a lot There's a lot on this game. Um, I'm going to say I'll go Geelong. I'll go Geelong. Okay. They're my team okay. at the MCG. Yep. Your game's next on the Saturday. We'll get to that um, last. GWS Sydney. Oh, wow. Didn't even know that. Another rivalry game. GWS Sydney, NG Stadium. Who's your tip? Here Ooh. we go. Who is your tip? GWS Sydney at the Giants, Giants ground. Uh, oh, that is a good game. Is that Saturday night? That is Saturday, Arvo, 4.35. Arvo. Jeez, I'd think that would be a night game. Um, mm. I'll tip I'll tip Sydney. I think I'd, I would just like Sydney to keep winning. They're that far ahead that I feel like they should just keep winning. Yeah. I'm going to tip GWS. I like I'm this. Gonna we're going to be Giants. We're gonna be apart this week. We are. MCG, Saturday night, Melbourne versus North Melbourne. That's an interesting game, this one. At the MCG. Yes. Danger danger game for the Ds, I do feel. Uh, but I I think the Ds will get them. I think, personally, I think that the, the you know, North midfield will be up against it with the experience of, you know, Gorn and Oliver and um, the likes through there. So, yeah, I think the Ds will get them. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good game. I, I genuinely do. I reckon North will be right up for this. They're playing a good brand at the moment. I, but I do think Melbourne, I think, yeah, they're, mate, there's a cluster of 20. There's four teams on 28. You boys are on 26. Then there's 30, 32, right up to fifth. So, yeah, there's – and Melbourne's on 28. So, yeah, I reckon – I reckon they'll get the job done. Uh, two games on Sunday, Marvel Stadium, Essendon and West Coast. Uh, Dons for me. I'm going to say Essendon as well. Yep. How crazy is it? I was just thinking, Harley Reid, this is his second game he's going to miss. So yep. he's got one more game to miss. And, you know, there's when he was playing, there was so many eyes on West Coast and – Watching them play and whatnot, and now that he's missed a couple, like you don't really hear much. Like that's just the enormity of his, of him. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> he's crazy. He's good for the game. He's great. Um, last game of the round, Optus Stadium, Fremantle versus Gold Coast. It's a big game, both teams. Oh, another another good game. I think Gold Coast uh, away record hasn't got me to confident in them, so I'm going to say Frio at home. I'm going to agree with you. I think they're going to I think they're um, yeah, going to be the talk of WA for this week, considering they didn't have a good game on the weekend against us, and historically when they've been challenged, they've come out really well, so I think Frio as well. Um, and then back to your game, Adelaide over 145, Port Adelaide versus Brisbane. This is going to be a beauty. Yeah, it is going to be a cracking game, and like I said before, if uh, we're not up to scratch with our defense. They will chop us up the the port power. They will, yeah. Looking at some of their games over the last few weeks, they've they've probably had a little bit of um, inconsistency that they wouldn't be happy with. So to play at home against us is going to be massive for them and a huge challenge for us. It's a, as you touched on before, it's an important win 
that we need to get um, if we can get it. So to go down there and, and yeah, play a really good side in Port Adelaide, it's going to be important. So fingers crossed we can do it, mate. Um, a lot of things will be in place. We've sort of reviewed them already and look forward to the challenge. Oh, mate, I reckon it's, this is going to rip in game. You guys will be well and truly up for this. Um, obviously, Adelaide, you haven't – hasn't been too friendly to you boys. Um, Adelaide, mm. the state itself, not just Port Adelaide. So really looking forward to it. I feel like – and you can answer this. I reckon whether a lot of the game's going to be won this week will definitely be through the midfield. And yep. I'm not sure if you've read much this week about obviously Port's, you know, game against the Giants. Uh, Horn, Francis, Butters and Rosie were, weren't were overly, you know, they were pretty quiet. And I feel like when, you know, teams get um, challenged and, and they're clearly going to get challenged, that's probably where they're going to really come out and want to hurt you guys. There must be... You know, that must be something that you guys are expecting from a midfield point of view. Yeah, definitely. And we've looked at some of their best stuff over the course of the last few days and some of the stuff you've just talked about too. So trying to find ways to manipulate it a little bit and catch them off their guard because they are. They, mate, some the, some of the speed that they hit the ball at is oh, like yeah. you can't stop it. You cannot stop it. So to, the work you do pre-stoppage and, you know, pre-ball up or whatever it is, like – you got to make sure you're on your toes because if you if you let them out, they're gone. And we we witnessed that last year in round one when we first went there. Um, yeah, in round one last year, and they they torched us. So we're gonna to have to be on from the start. You're you're spot on. Um, do you reckon? And you can't give too much away. Obviously, I know you won't. But there, like who who out of those three would you send someone to? Because in my opinion. They're all on their day as good as each other, those three midfield mainstays. There must be – is it going to be a collective focus or will it be something that, you know, one of his might go to? You just – I know you can't give too much away, but must be a plan put in place for, for maybe one of them or is it just all three of them? Who do you go to? I don't know. We'll have to probably have a team focus on all of them, I think. Personally, I feel like we'll have matchups and um, go to work from there. Yeah, really, really looking forward to it. And um, I reckon it's going to be hot from the start. I'll, be, I'll have my Brisbane Lions, Beanie and Scarf on, mate, supporting her and hoping you get the job done and wish you all the very best, but it's going to be a good game. Thanks, mate. Fingers crossed we can go down there and get a win. Be nice. Yes, that's it. So is there anything else footy-wise before we move on to – what are we going to do first? Maybe a bit of love this week. Yeah. Nah, I'll go straight into the give some love because I've got a – Bit of a thing I want to talk about, and I know a lot of people have sent this to me. So my give some love, mate, is you this week. I, was, okay? I knew it and was this coming. Is, this is not just from me. This is from all of your fans, all of our fans. Um, the amount of messages I had after this Fox footy thing that was put out last week, <laughs> <laughs> I laugh about it now, but, mate, it frustrated me so much, this 80-man squad or whatever they talked about in this All-Australian thing. Like, I'm sorry, but it just – it annoyed me. And the fact that your <laughs> name wasn't there and some Thanks. some others were, and you're in career best form, you've had one of the best, you'd be leading the best and fairest, like everything, every little number that you look at, you're dominating in. And for you not to be in this 80-man squad, I was like, nah, that's it. I've got to mention it. I know you're hating this right now, but <laughs> I had to do it. and <laughs> Had to do it. Had to do it because I want to give you some love, mate, because you deserve it well and truly. Thanks. Thank you. I appreciate it. All good. We'll move on from that. So, um, <laughs> no, I appreciate and hang on. it, mate. Before we, before we go, before we go, yeah, yep. I just want to know why. Like, can we get an explanation as to why your name wasn't on that list from someone, please? Someone in that mm. hierarchy, like, you've got to, there's got to be an explanation. Yeah. I don't know, mate. It's all good, though. <laughs> It's all good from my end. I'm I'm loving my footy and I'm enjoying being out there. But I appreciate the love from you. It's pre- coming from you, mate, means a lot as you're my best mate. So thank you. Um, my love uh, is actually a Giants player this week who I think is really important to them um, going forward, especially, yeah, especially going forward because I think he plays a vital role and he actually did a job on the weekend and it's Toby Bedford. Mm. He... Played on Zach Butters, which I think you would say this as well, but I actually didn't know that Bedford had that in him to go and tag someone and have a significant role and and actually do a tremendous job. I think he got 10 coaches votes, um, which shows how many or how well he went. But I think 
adding that string to his bow and then being able to go forward and have an impact, which he still did. He kicked a nice goal from stoppage, still had an f- uh, impact forward half of the footy. Um, I felt like, yeah, I felt like he's been building nicely and the games he's played, I've watched, he's been really good. So, yeah, he's the guy I wanted to give to, love to this week. I feel like he's having a, um, yeah, a, a really good patch of footy and now he's playing a vital role for them going forward. Yep, I'll second that too. I feel like he he played very well on the weekend and the pressure that he's brought to that team since moving from Melbourne, well, not mm. just the pressure, but the game that he's brought to that team has been next to none better than some of the, you know, some of the others that have been traded anywhere in the competition. So the role that he's playing is incredibly important to the Giants, that's for sure. Yep, I agree. Our Brooks Bloom of the Week, mate. You you want to go first or me go first? You can go first, this one. Well, I'm going to do a footy one because I think it would be – it would just be wrong if we if this isn't – if there isn't a footy one this week. And I think it's – Joel Amati is my one. And reason yeah. being is we don't often see – big bags of goals anymore. Very rarely. I mean, when was the last time we seen like the dominant forward dominance, really? I mean, he kicked four goals in the third quarter alone and was just yeah. dominant and everyone wanted him to kick 10. So the fact that he went out there and kicked nine goals, one, and um, yeah, had such a significant impact. He's my bloom of the week. Do you remember when Brucey kicked 10 when we were playing oh, together? Best thing ever, mate. That was so best sick. That was ever. so oh. sick. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. That was a great one of the my, one of my favorite days. Yeah, and I think we actually kicked a couple each too that day. Maybe we did. We, that was my first goal oh. for the Bulldogs. Actually, that was a special day. Oh, and who gave you? Fun. Who gave you that handball? Uh, yeah, probably you. <laughs> <laughs> you did. <laughs> oh, actually, well, I want to bring this up because those those our listeners would love this. So when Adi came to the Dogs, before we move on to the next thing, um, yeah, he. We'd always come out of the midfield, and if I was streaming out, because I, you know, I'd normally just kick it inside fifty. But the amount of times I'd sprayed me for not giving him the handball over the top, it just became second nature to me that I would have to handball over the top to ads because he's streaming over the fifty and he break the paint and kick goals. So that is exactly. why it ended up happening so much because you used to so spray exactly. me all the time. <laughs> if Brado chopped up a highlight reel of all my goals when I was at the Bulldogs with you, mate, there would there was. I reckon up to 10 goals that you directly gave me. So, yeah, I uh, I feel like we complement each other really well. <laughs> you anyway, spray give me, me that a, hard not giving those. <laughs> Love give it. me a Brooks Bloom of the Week, mate. Well, my Brooks Bloom of the Week, and I mentioned it before, I went to the races on Saturday and all carnival, I said Steffi Magnetica yes, would win. You did. Uh, the Strad broke. But then on Saturday, I got asked and I went against it. But I'm still sticking to it because I had Steffi Magnetica and I had Benedetta. Those were my two. And um yeah, went out there and won. Very impressive. Came down the inside. It was a, it was a really cool watch on the day. Beautiful weather, as I touched on earlier. Great atmosphere. But uh yeah, Steffi's my bloom of the week this week. For everyone listening, because we obviously chat a lot of if we're not talking footy, we're probably talking races. So that's what our life is at the moment. Um, and you did say, Steffi, you said Steffi and Benedetta, and I said Bella Nipatina. So, mm. and and Bella came second and Steffi came first. So, that was the first thing, actually, first thing post our game for our win. I went straight to my phone, messages galore, but I went straight past the messages, straight into the straighter to see who won because I wanted <laughs> Bella to win, but. Obviously, Bella didn't. So, but no, nah, it's um, it's an exciting time for us for what it's worth. Lordship, yes, which we've spoken about quite a bit, had its uh, had a little jump out yesterday. Was it? It was yesterday, and um, exciting times. It's going to be a race coming up very shortly. So we'll be yeah, well and truly getting on that on the potty. Cannot wait to, to for everyone to follow with our horse, Lordship. And Apollo Ridge, you, you're missing that one there too with Brooke. Um, True Brooke that. Got that one too because that's Apollo that's Ridge coming back into – Yeah, that's coming back into the fold too. So we look forward to watching those two. Oh, well, while I'm at it, I may as well d- mention Dancing Dolly as well, which is my other horse that I'm in with uh, <laughs> with the Bulldogs boys who had a troll last week as well. So, um, But Lordship, that's the one we've been talking about for a long time. So I cannot wait to see Lordship run. Love it. Uh, is that it? We're moving on to our YouTube winners now. It is. Yeah, I don't have much for Actually, you, mate. Actually, I've got one for us. This is oh, yeah. this is good. And I want Brado to do some quick research on this before he jumps on. But I did see and hear, because I follow the, the New Heights show, as you know. I've got the hair washing thing and the toe washing thing off him last week. 
You did. Um, Jason Kelsey mentioned to Travis that the Philly Eagles or part of the Philly Eagles is for sale. Oh. So my question to you is if you had enough cash, would you buy into the Philadelphia 100%. Eagles? <laughs> One thousand one thousand percent. A thousand I wonder percent, how mate. much it is how much do you think it is for a share? For like well, one one percent. Did he say how much share it is, or did he just say buying into the Philly Eagles? No, he just said there's a small share available to buy into the Philly Eagles. So I'm not wow. sure how much. Yeah, and I know Brad will be Googling right now um, before he jumps on. But, yeah, I was like, I wonder what Adam thinks of that. Like if – you know how we've sort of – we talked about horses and we've gone in on a horse together. Imagine yep. going in on the Philly Eagles together. Mate, mate, I would do that in a heartbeat. <laughs> so here we go. The Philly Eagles' value, their value is $4.9 billion. Yeah. So don't know how to do the math of that, but I'm just going to presume one percent of that, mate. Liz, far out. <laughs> You'd want to be in career best form and more to be able to, to be able to fork out that money to. Uh, but mate, could you imagine? That'd be unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable. You talk about the owners' box and the owners' um, tracks and whatever it is at the races. Imagine the owners' box at friggin' Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, it'd be sick. If anyone out there from the Philly Eagles listens to the potty, just keep us in mind. We might reach out. <laughs> if if you had your choice for sport, any sport in the world, any any sport, would you choose – what would you choose the NFL? To what? Be an owner in? Being a part owner in. It could be anything. NBA, it could be soccer, it could be anything. Would you choose the NFL? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I would too. I'll tell you what would be great, and- being able to get the inside on the NFL fantasy with the Philadelphia Eagles players. <laughs> that would be good, mate. Well, I don't know if that would be allowed, but um, – <laughs> Yeah. Imagine, imagine that. I just thought I'd, I thought you'd love that. I knew you would. Going down and asking AJ Brown, "Hey, mate, you uh, you you up for a hundred yards, six receptions, and two touchdowns for me, please? I need it. I really need it. Um, no, I uh, love that it. would be good. Yep. Give us the comments, mate, before we get Brado on. All right, YouTube winners for this week. Uh, we've got Lock two two eight Dunks. Listen to the New Heights podcast by Jason and Travis Kelsey, where they discuss how often they wash their hair, but also their feet. Love the lads. Broke down their shower routine." I'm with ads. I'm washing the hair two times. And the way you go about doing the rest, can't say I've ever washed my feet, but after listening to the potty this week, I might have to give it a go. (laughs) Ha-ha. Brisbane for the win this week as well as the dogs. Go ads and dunks. So there you go. Um, And then the the other one is a Lockie as well, but it's Lockie Clark 1994. Hello, great men. Absolute huge fan of the show and made the trip to Melbourne last week to watch the biggest battle of the season 2024. (laughs) <laughs> Would have been amazing to see two A celebrations in a row with you both kicking the first goal of the game for your respective teams. The podcast where Dunks got his questions was a New Heights podcast, which in my opinion, I think you guys are going a long way, such probably already there in being on the same level of podcasting as the Kelsey boys. That's a oh, huge compliment. That's huge. Thank you. That is that is a bit out there, but thank you. Keep up the great work, lads. Love listening to the show every week. Go Dogs and Lions. So there are two winners, Love mate. It. Thank you, boys. Thank you. Keep sending uh, those in when we get the when we get the questions out. What should this week's questions be? I mean, you that was a great question. What you said last week, you really need to think need to think outside the box here. The comments that don't get liked. So you've got to comment, and if you get liked by someone else, your comment's done. So you don't win. Oh. So it's whoever whoever's comment doesn't get liked. So comment something that's not going to get liked by another person. And see see if you win that way. So is that what you want to do? Yeah, let's do it. I want to try it because I saw it in the uh, social media world, and I was going through these comments, and there was like thousands, mate, and they all had one like, one like, one like, and you just uh, okay, you, you keep commenting because right, well, you keep going in. If that doesn't work, and if you get confused, because I'm a little bit confused with that, to be honest with you, I've got no idea what that means. But if you get confused, just send in. This is my one. You can do one or the other. I want our fans to send in their favorite goal that either you or I've kicked. Oh, okay. Like it. That will be, that is my one. So, yeah, if you, and again, reiterate what is, like, if you can remember a goal that Josh kicked, I want you to send it in and what the goal was, how he kicked it, and, you know, how it made you feel. Maybe you jumped out of your chair, whatever it may have been. So that that can be my one, and Josh can do the no like one, whatever that means. <laughs> All right. Time for the great man Brado to come on. Lads, I have been working overtime. Uh, we'll start low and we'll get <laughs> high. We so we started okay. with uh, Joel Lamarty. Yeah, he had zero touches, 
touches. He didn't touch the footy in the first quarter. Then he kicked oh, four in what? the second. He kicked oh. five in the third. And then Horse took him off and ruined his night. And oh. he only kicked one in the last. So he was on track. If he went four or five, he was probably going to kick six in the last. But is mm. that knocked him up to 31 goals for the year. And you were right, fifth overall on the goal-kicking tally. Uh, let's jump into Dunks versus Hawthorne. Semi-final 2016, 23 disposals, one goal, two behinds. You did Good kick game. two behinds, six Good tackles game. and a goal assist. So we'll give him that one. That's a massive game. Now, this is where you started being an absolute prick. Getting me to go back through your old episodes on the 17th of April. Ads. Yes. You asked Dunks who he was picking for the NBA finals. He didn't give you a solid answer. He said OKC will be hard to beat. That's all he gave you. You, on the other hand, you said the West will be won by Denver. You said the East would be won by Boston. And then Boston will win the whole thing. Come on! That is a win. <laughs> that is a win. So that's that's back to 17th of April. You said that. So a couple months ago today, pretty much that two months ago today. Yep. Uh, there was something I started taking down a few notes. I know that you'll hate this one, but a couple of your stats going into this for the All-Australian oh, selectors, the off. <laughs> just in case they didn't know. Number one disposals <laughs> in the comp, which is four uh, disposals higher than your career average. Number mm-hmm. one in the comp for effective disposals. Uh, equal six for clearances. Equal six for contested possessions. Number one for ground ball gets. Number three for score involvements. You're up in tackles for your career and you're rated, obviously, elite for clearances. So I don't know Thanks. what they're looking at. Uh, what a joke. What a joke. We'll clip this up <laughs> nice and uh, we'll send it straight down to Fox Footy for the, to, they can hand it on to the selectors. Uh, and the Philly Eagles, yep, uh, valued at $5.95 billion in 2023, Ooh. but they reckon it will spike up to a lot higher than that. I think between seven and nine billion or something crazy. Whoa. But one percent of five point nine five billion is obviously fifty nine point five million dollars for one percent. And that's all I've got for you. Thanks, brother. Oh, uh, just quickly then. Well, what we'll do is maybe you sell your noosa pad. I'll try and <laughs> sell my house up in Queensland. Then we can just see if we can buy into maybe a zero point zero 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 one percent of. Of the Eagles because, mate, that is ridiculous. Imagine still, I just think about imagining, you know, if you could do that, that would be so sick. Imagine just living in Australia playing footy and then in the off-season going over to Philly and watching the NFL team. Be sick. Oh, it would be sick. But no, mate, great episode. You know what? I'll end this one. I'll end this episode. I like that. I like that from me. And I know we got to see Griffin in the background there. Griffin, there's the boys. And they, joined us, they joined us for the potty. Uh, for those who watch, there's my two dogs in the background. But no, once again, thank you to everyone who listens in. Thanks to Brooke, Brooke, Brooks Brooms. We love her. Actually, catching up with her for dinner on Thursday. Don't know if I mentioned that, but cannot wait to see her. Um, yeah, thanks again. Good luck this week, Joshy. Hopefully, you dominate. Thank you, As mate. I said, I'll have my Brisbane scarf on, celebrating. Hopefully, a nice win for you boys. But have a good week, and uh, we'll get you, we'll catch you next week. Thanks, mate. You too. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Brooks Blooms, your all-in-one landscaping solution. Brooks Blooms' three-step landscaping experience offers a seamless journey from design to construction and ongoing care, ensuring your outdoor space thrives year-round. Visit brooksblooms.com today to embark on your landscaping journey where every step is a step towards a vibrant and beautiful outdoor entertaining space.